What are you doing in my swamp? Hello everybody, this is Ogre Boy, and I'm going to be doing my ranking for all 33 movies that Steven Spielberg has directed. Um, over the last five months I've reviewed every single movie he's directed, and so today I'm going to go ahead and rank all of them. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep this video as short as I can, so I may not linger on too much talking about each of them, but if you want to hear my full thoughts, I've reviewed each and every single one of them, so... You can check them out. I made a playlist for my Steven Spielberg video, so if you want to watch all of them, you can just hit the playlist and watch them that way, or just watch whichever ones you want to watch. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Coming in at number 33 is The Post. Um, this is a political drama about the Washington Post trying to get the Pentagon Papers and stuff and it just isn't really one of those movies that really interests me I'm not really into political movies anyway and uh, and this one just was not really that entertaining to me I didn't really care for it I know a lot of people have said that they felt like this movie came out 50 years too late if it would have came out around the time that the stuff that was happening in this movie happened then it might have been more entertaining back then and stuff but it just wasn't really anything that interested me I'm not really into this type of movie and everything so it's not really that it's bad it's pretty well made and has good acting and stuff it just isn't my cup of tea and everything so uh, it's definitely at the bottom of the barrel so the the post is number 33 and number 32 is Twilight Zone the movie. Um, I actually like this movie quite a bit and everything, but he only directs one segment of it, so, of it, so that's why I decided I'd just leave it at the bottom and stuff, because he, he didn't direct the full movie. If he had done the whole movie, then it would probably be even higher on this list, but um, I love the the kick the can segment, which is one that he directed. It's, one, it's not my favorite segment in the movie even, but I do really like that that one it's really really good and it's a uh, Twilight Zone the movie is a really good movie but uh, since he didn't direct the full thing that's why it's number 32 and number 31 is 1941 the movie that could have ended his career um, this one I I'm kind of mixed on in a way I get the hate and stuff it, it really isn't a very good movie and stuff but at the same time there are moments in here that I did like some of the stuff in here especially John Belushi's character every time he was on screen I was cracking up and it did have some really funny moments when it like did parodies of Jaws and Duel and stuff and, and he actually got actors from those two movies to come back to to parody those I thought that was kind of cool and everything but it just isn't a super great movie. I, I can completely get why people don't like this one very much and everything, but I, I think it's uh, okay, but it's definitely one of his worst movies, and it definitely deserves to be towards the bottom and everything. So, 1941 is number 31, and number 30 is Amistad. Um, this is just another one of those movies that I thought was meh and one really one that I really enjoyed very much uh, the story is about a group of slaves that uh, are being taken from Africa when they're not really supposed to be and stuff and they're, they're uh, they mutinize the ship and stuff and they they still end up getting taken back to the states and they have to go on trial and stuff and most of the movie is them just talking about the trial and all that and just it's, the movie's two and a half hours and it really goes at a really slow pace and stuff and it just wasn't really all that entertaining to me i, I thought it was an okay movie but it was well made and stuff but not really one that I really enjoyed very much and not one that I'd want to rewatch um, very often. I might watch it if I'm watching just watching Spielberg stuff, but that's probably the only time I'm going to watch it. So yeah, 
uh, I'm going to start as number 30, and number 29 is Munich. Um, this movie has its moments. There, there are some parts of this movie that I really enjoyed and stuff. Like, the first act was really good and everything, and there was some good stuff in the second act, but it slowed down really uh, really badly in the, the second act, and then the third act it picked back up, so it was kind of an uneven paced movie, but I, I thought it was okay. Eric Bannon was really good in here, and um, it has some brutal violence and stuff, which you, you get when, when Spielberg goes for the violence, he does get pretty brutal at times, and everything. Not as brutal as he has in some of his other movies, but uh, I do like this movie. It just isn't one of, one of my most favorites. It's one that I, I probably won't find as rewatchable and stuff. It's another one of those uh, period pieces that it's, I, I enjoy some, but I, and it's not that I don't like them. They're just not as rewatchable, if that makes sense. So, uh, Munich is number 29, and number 28 is The Color Purple. Um, I really like this movie quite a bit. It's not really that I think it's a bad movie. Pretty much uh, from Munich up are all movies that I think are at least pretty good and everything. Um, and I, I really do like The Color Purple. It's just a really hard movie to watch. The the brutality of the way the main character is treated and stuff is it makes it hard to watch. But I do enjoy, enjoy it. I think it's a really good story. And everything it has a really great cast, especially Whoopi Goldberg and Oprah. Both of them were amazing in this movie, and Danny Glover was great in here too. And, and making me hate Danny Glover in a movie is really hard to do, and everything. But I absolutely hated his character in this movie, and everything. So I will say that uh, he gave a really great performance, and this is a really good movie. Um, it just isn't one of my favorite Spielberg movies, so. Uh, the color purple is number 28, and number 27 is Minority Report. Um, this is a pretty good sci-fi movie where, uh, set in the future where uh, these people can uh, stop people from killing people before it happens and stuff. They, they find the people that are accused of it and they imprison them, and Tom Cruise plays one of the agents that that does this and stuff and he he gets gets pretty accused of killing somebody and goes on the run and stuff it's a really fun little cat and mouse action movie and it's a really entertaining movie tom cruise gives a really great performance in here and uh has some really good special effects and uh cool looking realistic depictions of the future some of the stuff that's happened in this movie actually has already started to happen and everything. I don't remember how far into the future this movie is set, but I'm curious to see how it's going to be. I think it was set in 2050 something, if I remember right. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed Minority Report. So it's number 27, and number 26 is Ready Player One. Um, I had a lot of fun watching this movie. I, I rewatched it for the first time a couple nights ago, and it's really a good movie. It has a lot of uh, great moments and stuff with uh, all kinds of little appearances from characters of video games and movies and stuff and so many easter eggs in this movie that's about finding easter eggs I thought that was kind of cool too and uh, it's kind of like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory that they're, they're hunting for these keys and stuff and whoever finds them gets to take over the Oasis which is a virtual reality simulation thing that everybody uses to to socialize and stuff, so I, I thought it was really a cool movie and everything, it, and uh, has some really good animation and stuff in here, and it's a really entertaining movie. So Ready Player One is number 26, and number 25 is the BFG. Um, this is a one that I was really looking forward to watching when I watched it here. Uh, not too long ago. It, it's a, a good movie and everything. Mark Rylance is really great as the title character. And uh, the little girl in here is really good too. And uh, uh, 
and just a really great adaption of Roald Dahl's book, uh, one of the ones that I actually grew up with as a kid, um, and one of his books that I actually did read as a kid, and I, I watched the animated version all the time and everything, so I, I got to say I, I love how faithful this one is, because a lot of times Spielberg puts his own flair into these movies and and diff makes the book some movies completely different and stuff but this one he didn't really do a whole lot of that in and it follows the book pretty well and everything and it's a really entertaining movie and everything so the BFG is number 25 and number 24 is Hook um, this is a movie that when I was a kid I liked it a lot more than I do now I, I think it's I still think it's a good movie and I'm still entertained by it and stuff but I just don't love it like I used to I think part of it is just now that I'm older the the uh, sense of magic and wonder and stuff maybe that that's why it, I just don't enjoy it as much I don't feel that as much when I watch it anymore but I, I think it is a good movie Robin Williams was excellent as Peter Pan and um, uh, I think, even though I think he's overrated as Captain Hook, uh, Dustin Hoffman was good as Captain Hook too, and the the rest of the cast were all good. The only one that I really didn't care for her in this is Julie Roberts, who is one of my favorite actresses, but she was really annoying as Tinkerbell and stuff. But uh, I think Hook was is a good movie. It's just not one of my most favorites and it's not one that I find myself free watching near as much out of the ones I did grow up with from Steven Spielberg I actually probably watched this one the least so Hook is number 24 and number 23 is Empire of the Sun um, this in this movie Christian Bell is like 12 years old and he plays this kid that gets put in a concentration camp and uh, follows like his loss of innocence and stuff as the World War II goes on and stuff. It, it's really, really good movie. It's really depressing and kind of hard to watch, kind of like Color Purple and everything. So that's why it's so low, but it is a really good movie and it has some really great performances. Like I said, Christian Bell was amazing in this movie. As a, even as a kid actor, you could tell he, he was going to grow up to be a really great actor and he is one of the best actors of the, that generation and stuff and uh then you got uh john malkovich he's really great in this movie as well and uh there's other like memorable characters that are just smaller roles like ben stiller has a small role in here and it's just a really great cast and it's a really good movie it has some really good moments in here there's some that are like really heartfelt and funny and there's some that are really sad it just it's really well written and everything so Empire of the Sun is number 23 and number 22 is The Adventures of Tin Tin uh, this is another one that took me a long time to watch because I and I was tr personally the reason I was trying to wait on this was because I was wanting to wait to see if they would continue with the trilogy and they never did and I almost didn't just gave up on never seeing this movie because I, I didn't want to see a movie that would be leaving off for the next chapter in a trilogy and not get to finish it and this movie does that but it's still really enjoyable and everything you know, I, I really liked it and plus motion capture animation kind of threw me off too because even though I like motion capture animation movies uh, I'm always eerie about them because sometimes they look really bad and everything but this one actually looked really good it was one of the best ones that, that I've seen out of like ones that's solely mo capture animation and everything like this is the best one that I like looking one anyway and I really enjoy this movie so The Adventures of 1010 is number 22 and number 21 is Bridge of Spies uh, this movie completely took me by surprise. I did not expect to like it near as much as I did. Um, it, it pretty much uh, follows the story of a man who is uh, a lawyer. He, he uh, defends this guy that is being accused of being a Russian spy in court and stuff. And 
after uh, the Soviet Union shoots down a U-2 plane uh, and takes the pilot hostage, uh, this lawyer has to help the government and stuff in trading the the man he that was accused of being a spy that he defended and stuff, trading him to get the pilot back. And it's really just really really good movie. And I was really surprised I enjoyed it as much as I did. This is one of those political thriller type movies that I'm not really into most of the time, but there was something about this movie that I really enjoyed. Maybe it was partially because it had Tom Hanks and he's one of my favorite actors, but uh, I think also part of it was Mark Rylance as, as the, the Russian spy character. He's just a really likable actor and he, he really did a great job in this movie and had a really great screen presence and he, he deserved that Oscar that he won. And everything so Bridge of Spies is number 21 and number 20 is Close Encounters of the Third Kind um, I really like this movie quite a bit um, it's really entertaining Richard Dreyfuss gives a really great performance in this movie and uh, all of the cast really do but uh, it has some really great moments and stuff and some that are pretty intense and stuff like the scene when uh, the woman is trying to stop her little boy from escaping the house and stuff when the lights are beaming through the house it's just a really great moment and everything I, I've always really liked this movie quite a bit it just it is kind of slow paced and stuff and that's why it's kind of so low but I do enjoy this movie quite a bit and everything and it's not really that it's bad and everything that's not why it's at number 20 it's just there are 19 other movies that I prefer to watch over it if that makes sense so uh close encounters of the third kind is number 20 and number 19 is always um this is a movie that stars richard dreyfus once again and also stars holly hunter and john goodman and in this movie richard dreyfus plays this pilot who uh is on the verge of retiring and stuff and he goes to do one last force fire because he, he's like a firefighter pilot that and stuff and uh he ends up getting killed and uh he's having he comes back as like a ghost having to uh help his girlfriend find peace and stuff with another man before he can move on and go into the afterlife and it's really good movie it's one of those concepts that's been done before and stuff i think this movie actually was a remake and uh it was one of the ones that was released during a big trend in the late 80s and early 90s after when the movie Ghost came out and stuff. I think Ghost actually came out after this one, though. But it, it, I've always liked this one. I thought it was really underrated and everything. And it's a really good movie. So always is number 19. And number 18 is... Lincoln. Um, I, I really enjoy this movie quite a bit. I think it's a really good movie and everything. It, it has a really great cast, especially Daniel Day-Lewis. He was amazing as Abraham Lincoln, but uh, Sally Field was great in here too. And you got Tommy Lee Jones and David Strathairn. Uh, they're both really great in this, and uh, it's really an entertaining movie. And it's one of those movies that really surprises me on how much I was entertained by it, because like I've said. I'm not really into political stuff, and this movie does have a lot of that, because most of the movie is them just sitting around talking about trying to end slavery and and the Civil War and stuff, And but I think it was really well done, and uh, it has a lot of really great moments in between those scenes with like personal stuff going on in Lincoln's life with his son and his wife and all that, so uh, it has some really great moments in here, and I really enjoy this one quite a bit. So Lincoln is number 18. And number 17 is... Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Um, this is a really good movie and it, everything. It is my least favorite Indiana Jones movie, but I still enjoy it quite a bit. I think the reason it's my least favorite is they play it too safe and everything. Because Temple of Doom was really dark and stuff and uh, got a lot of criticism for that. So... They played it safe, making this one a lot more lighthearted, and 
everything. I wish I would have done just made it a little bit darker and took a little bit more risks with it instead of just trying to replicate what they did with Raiders, which isn't really a bad thing. I mean, Raiders is a great movie and everything, and I, I like that they did try to go back to formula and everything. I think it's a good movie. It just is my least favorite out of the franchise. It's not really anything bad or anything. It just is my least favorite, but um, it is a good movie though and the stuff with Indiana Jones and his dad is a lot of fun to watch and everything and the character of Elsa is a really interesting character the way she she goes back and forth on being good and bad is, is kind of fun to watch too so yeah uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is number 17 and number 16 is Catch Me If You Can uh, this is a really good movie. I, I really love this one. Leonardo DiCaprio plays this guy who's this con artist that keeps on getting himself in all kinds of crazy situations and uh, outsmart keeps on outsmarting the FBI and everything. Tom Hanks plays the FBI agent on his trail and everything. It, it's really, really good movie. It has a really great cast and everything. Like I said, Leonardo DiCaprio is great in here and Tom Hanks is really good. And then you got... Uh, Amy Adams, Jennifer Garner, Christopher Walken, uh, just to name a few of the people that are in this movie that that are just really great in here. And uh, even though some of them don't have a lot of screen time, and some of them do, Martin Sheen is in here. Uh, it has a lot of them are really good in this movie, and uh, some of them are only in here for a few minutes, but they make an impact and stuff. So. Uh, Catch Me If You Can is number 16, and number 15 is AI Artificial Intelligence. Um, this is one that I used to watch all the time on HBO when it when it first aired on cable and stuff, and I really like this movie quite a bit. It's pretty much a retelling of Pinocchio with a sci-fi twist to it. Um, Haley Joel Osment plays this uh, robot, and he's really, really amazing in the role. If I didn't know who he was back then as a kid, I would have actually thought they actually built a robot kid and stuff. Like, it, they, they did such a good job making him act like a robot and everything. And his performance is absolutely amazing. I honestly think he should have gotten an Oscar for this movie. And it has some really great special effects and stuff that hold up really, really well. And it, it does have a little bit of bad CGI, but not very much. And it's really entertaining movie and it's a unique twist on the Pinocchio story and everything so AI artificial intelligence is number 15 and number 14 is Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull um, this was my introduction to the Indiana Jones franchise I had never seen any of the movies up to that point although I had really wanted to I just at the time that this movie came out I didn't have access to to them so I, uh, it took me a long time to be able to finally see it, see them, but I saw this one in the theater, it was a lot of fun and everything, and back then I was a huge Shia LaBeouf fan, and I still think he's a pretty good actor now, but, um, he, uh, he was one of the reasons I wanted to see it, plus Spielberg directing it, George Lucas being involved made me want to see it even more, and I really enjoyed this movie, I think it's a lot of fun, and everything I, I, it does have some bad CGI but it also has a lot more practical and good effects and stunt work that that like the original trilogy stuff that people overlook because they want to be negative about the CGI and stuff and it, I think it's really underrated and everything maybe it's because I just don't have that the nostalgia and bias towards the original trilogy is why I am able to enjoy this one as much but it's definitely not the best in the franchise, but I do really enjoy it. And I definitely think it was better than Last Crusade. And the other reason I think it's better is, like like I mentioned when I was talking about Last Crusade, it did take risks and stuff. The aliens and stuff were, were something different for the franchise. So I know a lot of people say it didn't pay off, but it made sense why they put aliens in here and stuff. So... Uh, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is number 14, and number 13 is The Terminal. Um, this is a really underrated movie that he directed that has Tom Hanks, uh, 
in this movie, Tom Hanks' character is stuck living in a in an airport terminal after his country has been in been invaded by terrorists, and he, uh, he can't go into the U.S. because he doesn't have the the right paper work and stuff so he's kind of stuck living in there and everything and Tom Hanks gives a really underrated and amazing performance in this movie he should have gotten an Oscar for this one and everything and it has so many likable characters and a really good cast of people that uh, would later become famous like Zoe Saldana and Diego Luna and stuff it has and Catherine Zeta-Jones is great in here and uh, just really really good movie so the terminal is number 13, and number 12 is War Horse. Um, I, I just watched this one for the f very first time the other day, and I absolutely loved it. I think it was one of Spielberg's best movies in a long time and everything. I love like how uh, we see this, this horse go through all kinds of different stuff during World War One, and the fact that it's a World War One movie also because you don't get very many of those um, but I, I think it's a really really entertaining movie it has a really great cast um, most of them are people that have now be gone on to become famous like Tom Hiddleston and Benedict Cumberbatch both of them have have became really big and there, there's a bunch of other good people in here uh, and like he you get to see this horse meet all kinds of different characters going through the war and everything and him finally getting to go home to his original owner and stuff you know how the movie's going to end and stuff but it, it's a really well done movie and everything so war horse is number 12 and number 11 is war of the worlds um i absolutely love this movie it, it's been one of my favorite spielberg movies ever since i was a a kid um I remember when this movie came out. I didn't really know anything about it. Everything I had never really heard of War of the Worlds at the time, and my one of our family friends uh, got me to watch it with him, and I, I instantly fell in love with this movie. I had tons and tons of recorded copies of it and wore them out on VHS and stuff. And it's just a really entertaining movie and Tom Cruise is really good in here and Dakota Fanning is especially she's great and you got the the crazy performance from Tim Robbins he is this crazy dude that wants to fight the aliens and stuff and everything he, he's really good in here and it just has a, a really good story I know some people don't really like it but I, I've always enjoyed it quite a bit and I think it I still think it's really intense and everything even all these years and rewatches later so War of the Worlds is number 11 and number 10 is Duel um, this is the fir first movie that he ever directed and I watched it for the first time last October when I was doing my 31 days of horror and everything because I, I kind of included suspense movies in in my 31 days of horror last year and this is a suspense movie it's not really a horror movie but uh, I really enjoyed it a lot when I watched it the first time and then I rewatched it and re-reviewed it when I started doing his reviews and stuff and I actually really love this movie it, it really is one of his best movies and stuff still it, it's really intense Dennis Weaver gives a really great performance in here and like like just the way it's shot and everything is really good it, it was originally made as a TV movie and it got a limit got a little theatrical release later down the line but um, it doesn't feel like a TV movie like like it's just really really well made and everything and from the get-go you can tell that Spielberg has a really unique style and everything and I just absolutely love this one so Duel is number 10 and number 9 is the Lost World Jurassic Park. I know technically there are a lot of movies under this one that are better written and everything, but I absolutely love this movie. I used to watch it all the time as a kid, along with the first one and everything. So this has always been one of my favorites. This one, this one being in this spot, a lot plays to nostalgia because I, I, like I said, I, I grew up with this one. 
but I, I've always enjoyed it and felt like it, that this is one of the more underrated movies in the franchise. Uh, I love like that you get the two T-Rexes and the little baby T-Rex that's just so adorable and everything. It's so cute. And uh, the scene when they're the T-Rexes are pushing the their trailer over the cliff, that's one of the best scenes in the whole franchise. And Spielberg still does a really great job with this movie. And uh, uh, the visual effects in here are, are just as good as they are in the first one. They hold up really well. And everything I I do think that like as much as I love Jeff Goldblum in this movie I honestly feel like he he's not playing the same character that he was in the first because Ian Malcolm is just so differently differently written in this one it doesn't feel like the same character but I still like like him and everything and I, I like this movie quite a bit so it's number nine and number eight is <laughs> Schindler's List. Um, yeah, I know this is probably going to get y'all to sharpen your pitchforks again. This is this is one of those movies that I absolutely love. I think it's a really great movie. Um, very well made and everything, but it is a really brutal and hard movie to watch and everything. It doesn't have that rewatchability and stuff. Kind of like with, like I said, with Munich and stuff, but although I would probably watch Munich or The Post uh again before I watch this one because of how hard it is to watch I probably won't watch this one again for another 10 15 years and everything it just it's very very brutal movie and uh, really depressing it always puts my head in a funk every time I watch it so I, I don't like watching this one very much but I gotta acknowledge it it's a really great movie great performances especially from Liam Neeson and uh, Ralph Fiennes and and Kingsley, they're all amazing in this movie, and uh, all of the cast in here are really great. All the extras and people that play the Jewish people and stuff, it just has a really great story. The cinematography is amazing. It's just a really great movie, and it it is the one that most people consider to be Spielberg's masterpiece in his magnum opus, and I can completely get that and everything I, I, on a technical level and stuff. It is probably his best Renton movie and all that, but I, I just can't put it a put it higher than this because there are other ones that I personally love. And when I, when I go to his movies, I want to watch the ones I'm more entertained by and stuff, if that makes sense. So I have nothing against Chandler's List, and it's not bad or anything being at number eight. So uh, yeah, so Chandler's List is number eight, and number seven is. The Sugarland Express. Um, I really love this movie. It's a really great story about a couple who uh, take this cop hostage and stuff, and they're like going on a slow speed chase and everything, uh, trying to get, because they want to get their their kid back and everything, and they're being pursued by the cops and everything, and uh, it's just really really good story. It's a little small scale everything the woman breaks her husband out of jail which I honestly don't get how she could have broken him out of jail that easily and stuff and I think in real life she didn't actually do that but I can't remember but I know it did have some little inaccuracies but it's still a really well made movie and this was his first uh, big movie that went to theaters and everything and it's really really an underrated movie it doesn't really get talked about much when they talk about Spielberg's movies everything so this one is a really good one and it's number seven number six is saving private ryan um i absolutely love this movie it's my favorite war movie of all time and it has so many great performances uh tom hanks giovanni rubisky uh matt damon uh and so many other good people in here, especially Matt Damon, though. He, he really was amazing in this movie and everything. I, all of the cast was great, but Matt Damon especially. You get, like, smaller roles with Vin Diesel and Paul Giamatti, who are actors that I absolutely love and stuff. So it has a really good cast and uh, 
really, really brutal violence and stuff. Uh, kind of like Chandler's List, except not quite as brutal to me. I think, I think Chandler's List is kind of in its own, on its own is, and as far as violence goes in a movie, it, it's more effective in that than it is this. But this movie it does have a lot of really brutal moments and uh, some really sad moments too. But I absolutely love this movie. So uh, Saving Private Ryan is number six. And number five is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, I absolutely love this movie. It's a ton of fun. And everything from start to finish it's the globe trotting adventure movie and uh, Indiana Jones gets himself in all kinds of crazy situations in this movie and uh, there's so many great scenes like like this the scene when they're fighting by the plane and uh, the the truck scene towards the end and the face melting scene there are so many memorable moments when they get stuck in that in that pit with the with the snakes and just really great movie and uh, you got Karen Allen as uh, Indy's love interest, Marion Ravenwood, and she's excellent in this movie. They have really great chemistry, and it, it's easily one of the best movies in the uh, Jones franchise, and it's my number five. And number four is Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. This is easily my favorite movie out of the franchise. I just love how dark it gets. Like, like it gets really dark and brutal at times in this movie, and uh, it does kind of have a little bit of a slow start, but once it gets going, it, it goes by really fast and everything. That was my biggest complaint when I did my review, was like, this movie takes forever to get going, but once it does, it goes by, it starts going too fast, if that makes sense. But it, it's still a really entertaining movie, great special effects, Molaram is a really great villain and everything, and it... Uh, it just has some, a lot of dark themes in here, like child slavery and human sacrifice and stuff. They, they, Spielberg and George Lucas were both in really dark places in their lives, and it really showed in this movie. And uh, uh, i got to commend them, because they, they really were ballsy with this and everything. The, the only thing, other thing besides like the pacing that bothered me with this movie was Willie is uh, one of the most annoying characters in movie history she gets on my nerves really really bad um but it doesn't ruin the movie for me i still really like it and everything it has a lot of fun moments this when they're in the little mine shaft carts and the going on the bridge and all that it's just really fun adventure movie so indiana jones and the temple of doom is number four and number three is E.T. Um, this is a really, really great movie. Most people have this as one of their top favorites of Spielberg, and I can completely understand. I know some people who would even say that it's their favorite movie that he directed, but it is such a great story that holds up really well. Everything, although I know a lot of people nowadays say it's too over sentimental and stuff because the way the world's becoming and stuff that you can't can't have good things in it and appreciate good stuff anymore but I absolutely love this movie it, it's been one of my favorites ever since I was a kid and uh, it has so many great moments and stuff like like them first meeting and stuff when and everything and when he meets Gertie for the first time and they're both screaming and stuff it cracks me up every time and when he E.T. gets drunk and stuff, and Elliot gets drunk too. That, that crap always cracks me up. And uh, there, there's so many other really great moments in this movie, but uh, the flying scene, of course, when E.T. uses the force to make the bike fly and uh, everything, and uh, it just has a really great cast and everything. All of the kids and stuff are really great in this movie especially Drew Barrymore she just steals the show every time she's on screen because she's so adorable and it's just really really great movie so E.T. the extraterrestrial is number three and number two is Jurassic Park uh, I really really had a tough time deciding whether this was going to be my number one or not because I absolutely love Jurassic Park and it, it's easily my favorite movie that Spielberg's directed since I was born. Um, 
It's such a such a great movie. Every time I watch it, I always forget how much I enjoy it. And I don't know why I forget because it's one of my favorite movies of all time. But like it, it's amazing how it seeing the special effects and stuff. They they still amaze me every time I watch it. It's like like got the best special effects I think in any movie and everything. It uh, the dinosaurs just look amazing. And as a kid, I was a, a huge dinosaur fanatic. I, I was loved everything dinosaurs so this movie was one of my favorites as a kid and it's still one of my favorites nowadays it's just so many great moments and i love the whole jurassic park franchise and everything but th none of them hold a candle to this one and most of spielberg's other movies don't either but uh, this is a really really great movie and it's barely number two um but my number one favorite steven spielberg movie of all time is Jaws, um, just like with 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 Jurassic Park, uh, this one would be my top ten favorite movies of all time as well. Um, I absolutely love this movie. I've always loved Jaws. I it's uh, ever since I saw it for the first time. I was I saw it when I was ten years old with my uncle, and uh, absolutely fell in love with this movie when I saw it for the first time. And it just such a such an amazing movie. Uh, it's the first horror movie I ever saw and it got me into horror. And I had already seen some Spielberg movies when this movie came out, but it was one of the ones that really made me want to see more of his stuff and everything and kind of started started the trend of me becoming a huge Steven Spielberg fan and has really great performances. John Williams' score is absolutely amazing, one of the best horror movie scores of all time. And he does amazing scores for most of Spielberg's movies. I might have to just do a top ten list of my favorite scores from Spielberg movies that John Williams did sometime. Uh, but I absolutely love this movie. It's a masterpiece uh, and everything. There's not much else I can say about Jaws that I haven't said before. I've reviewed it three times already on my channel, so... I that's all I'm really going to say about it, but I absolutely love it, and it's easily my number one favorite Spielberg movie. But anyway, let me know in the comments what your favorite Steven Spielberg movies are, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you want to tell me your full ranking, if you've seen all 33 movies, uh, feel free to do that. And if you don't, uh, just tell me your favorite. Maybe tell me your least favorite, too, if you want, or uh, your top 10 or top 5 or whatever you want to do. But... Uh, anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of this list, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a good day, everybody.